Hello, good morning. Welcome to the Arsenal Way. Hope you're doing good. Hope you are well. Joining us for our Arsenal Agenda show Monday to Friday, 9.30 a.m. UK time. As always, joined by a couple of guests to go through the weeks and the day's events surrounding the club we love. Bailey, how you doing, mate? Are you well? Are you good? Yeah, I'm all well, Tom. How are you? Very good, mate. Very good. Happy it's Friday. Friday feeling and uh, yeah, ready for the weekend. Chris, Ready for the weekend, fella? Ready for the Sunday, Saturday? I don't want Sunday, Saturday. That's really just the wrong order. But <laughs> are you ready for the weekend? Yeah, buzzing, mate. Can't wait for the, uh, for the international <laughs> boat to well and truly get underway. That? Yeah, buzzing, mate. That was, wow. The juxtaposition at its finest. Uh, that is the international weekend. break for you, mate. That's all I can say. There's more than football in this world, Chris. Come on. Well, yeah, true, true. Is there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Good morning, people in the chat box. I hope you're feeling better than Chris is this morning. Clearly, we are going to bring you a fun-filled show, I promise. Stevie, Mark, uh, Vinny, we've got in the chat box. Brad, Jonathan, uh, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. As always, please do drop a like on today's show and subscribe to the Arsenal Way if you haven't done so already. Yesterday, we uploaded a video where Gina, Chris Wheatley and Kai Kai all went through the behind the scenes uh, at the Arsene Wenger film premiere. If you haven't yet watched it, please do go do that. There's interviews of Arteta, uh, Arsene Wenger and Edu and Gabriel Clark and Co too. So please do go give that a watch. It's really, really insightful. And if you weren't able to go and watch it, uh, don't worry, you, you're not going to get anything spoiled, but you're going to be able to see all the behind the scenes stuff on the red carpet. So do go and check that video out. We are going to start though in a very much similar sense of documentaries because Arsenal this season, of course, are having a series of documentary filmed about them by Amazon and they're all or nothing series. And because it is the international break and this is something chat box you can get very heavily involved in, I want to know your key highlight of what you think is going to be shown in the series so far. Bailey, I'll start with you. What's the thing that you are most looking forward to seeing, you know, seeing behind the scenes of, of the season so far? Yeah, I think Arsenal have done this season on purpose, the way they've gone about things. We started off horribly already, the fall, and now we're on the rise. We're seeing, we're going to see, of course, see the Shaka injury. I think we'll see Smith Rowe's call up, which I'm really looking excited for. I think there will be a little segment on Smith Rowe's rise to becoming an Arsenal player and then his rise to playing for England. I think that will be my my pick up. Of course, the Arsenal change of form, the win, at, a win against Tottenham will be big as well. And our unbeaten run will be recorded as well. I think that'll be a massive highlight of the series. But Personally, I want to see Smith Rowe's rise to to England call up. That's what I'm looking forward to. Nice one, Chris. Um, yeah, well, Bailey mentioned a few things there. I think um, basically, Bailey, you stole Chris's, is what he's saying. <laughs> well, well, no, I think you know. Um, obviously, the the summer signings, how we went about getting them through the door. Obviously, behind the scenes of of um, maybe Edu doing some transfer negotiations or something. I think there was. Similar things um, uh, captured with the, the Leeds documentary. I remember watching that when Daniel James came to do his medical and sign a contract that fell through last minute. Um, I'd love to see Edu getting absolutely rattled with some uh, other um, members of the board at another club or something because they're not lowering their price for, <laughs> price for a player. Or that would be class. But, um, you know, that would be interesting seeing, seeing how we went about getting them through the door sort of behind the scenes. Um, with, with that, um, obviously, it's always been touched on, hasn't it, how Arsenal go about signing players and their recruitment process. And it was a very different one this summer, wasn't it? So maybe there was even some some uh, video capture of them planning that out and, and the, the, the process they decide to go with. And obviously, yeah, getting players through the door. I think the Xhaka red card at Man City would be an interesting one. Was there some dressing room reaction mm. with that? Uh, um uh, the, the the Tottenham win, the reaction to that, of course, um, will, will be class. I'm sure that the players are absolutely buzzing after that. Um, some scenes in the dressing room, I, I would expect. Um, so, yeah, you know, I've, I've been watching the training videos that Arsenal put on every every few days. And um, you can see the Amazon cameras recording them there. So I'm sure there'll be plenty of training content as, as well. Um so yeah, I, I say yeah. The, the transfer Xhaka incident, um, the, the the Spurs win, um, yeah, that will certainly be uh, the highlight so far from from this season. That I'm I'm very much looking forward to. 
Absolutely. Um, from my perspective, I I really want to see Arteta lose it. Like I don't know if you've seen the video of uh, yeah. where the guy doesn't leave the the doesn't, doesn't close the door, <laughs> and he's like, "Sorry guys, I'm just gonna close." And he's like, "Can you can you like close that please? For goodness sake, close that door." I just want to little things like that. I appreciate. I don't know what it is. I just find them quite amusing. So I do want to see kind of Arteta lose it a little bit, just unnecessarily at people. That that'd be quite funny. Um, just how. Uh, backroom scuffles i mean the spurs documentary seeing that half-time scuffle between uris and, and son like i don't mind seeing stuff like that from i think it shows that obviously the players really care about what's going on so i don't mind seeing a little bit of drama i mean i am a you know i'm, I'm a, a big watcher this is an awful in uh, admittance but a big watcher of made in chelsea so i love drama i just i just breathe it in and uh seeing a little bit of uh a little bit of that in my life for arsenal so uh, a bit of drama here and there i don't care for your judgment bailey i don't care it's uh it's it's just a, it's a great love and I want to see uh, some more drama in the Arsenal dressing room. Bailey, just Bailey's right. going to be absolutely fuming when the documentary reveals for the first time ever that Hussamawa actually came for a medical and he failed. <laughs> it. I'm blown, <laughs> blown. Imagine. That is going to be the one. It's going to happen and I'm going to revel in it. I'm going to revel in it. Uh, Johan says, Xhaka's contract extension uh, coming through. That'd be great to watch. Uh, Vinny says, Arsenal versus Spurs, obviously. I think the fans will realise how important some of the players like Xhaka are in the background of the club. Mark pointed out the Spurs win is obviously going to be uh, Tom missing his schoolyard scuffles. Yeah, the, you've completely misjudged my character. <laughs> I'm not, very much like watching the drama, not being involved in the drama, unless it's on the sixth side pitch, of course. Um, but good morning to everyone else that's joining us in the chat box. Uh, it's, I'm looking forward to it. I was buzzing as soon as they announced it. I wasn't being all kind of prejudgmental. There's a lot of people going, oh, for goodness sake, I don't want to see what goes on. I'm buzzing. I can't wait to see what happens on this documentary. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they put together at the end of the campaign. Um, our next one's a little bit, again, it'll be an international break. I want to do something a little bit more fun. And uh, you're going to see kind of a series hopefully coming out from our, our fan brands channels over the next few days or so, or so surrounding the idea of, of an unpopular opinion. Now, you may see these on your timelines crop up on social media and someone writes the words unpopular opinion. You may actually switch off when you see, oh, not another one of these awful takes. But I thought what would be quite funny is if we come up with our own unpopular opinions about Arsenal this season. You may have one about Arsenal yourselves in the chat box. So let us know what your unpopular opinion about Arsenal is this season. Bailey, we'll kick off with yours, mate. What did you come up with? Look, I know we've done a piece recently, Tom, me and you, about Nicola Pepe and you would sell him for £25 million and I wouldn't. And I'm going to mm. reaffirm that point and say that Pepe this season will come in clutch. He will be an important squad member this season. He will have his run where he comes into the side, starts for the team and gets the necessary goals that's needed. Because Smith, Rowe and Saka won't be able to do it the whole season. They're young. They will get burnt out. They need to just take a break from the side a little bit. And then Pepe will come in and he will make, make one of the positions him his... His own positions. I promise you that he will come in and he will do his thing. What position? Well, what one is it going to be then, mate? Because I don't know who he takes the place of. Like he's not getting in front of Smith Rowe. He's not getting in front of uh, of Bakaya Saka. He's never playing yeah. in a central role. Who is he getting in front of? Look, we, all, we all have an injury. There will be. Uh, oh, you're relying on injuries for this. Listen, to happen, we're Arsenal, right? If we keep the fully, if we keep the squad fully fit, I'll be amazing. For you about to say, if we keep the faith, there'll be injuries. <laughs> <laughs> Just go off the fast, but now nah, he will come in at some point and he will, he will finally show his worth. Maybe not 75, 70 million worth, but he will do something that proves he deserves a new contract. Fair enough. Again, if, if a twenty-five mil bid comes in, I'm sticking with my view on this. I'm, I'm letting him go. Chris, yeah. what did you come up with, fella? Yeah, well, that's definitely an unpopular opinion, Bailey. Because well, <laughs> I don't know how much longer I can stick with Pepe, but um, it's it's not necessarily. Uh, surrounding this season in particular but you know after looking and after talking to you boys about it this morning I would actually go up to say that Arsenal's transfer business has been better than Liverpool's over the last couple of seasons what? yeah you heard it um you know I'm looking at their the business they conducted in for the 2020-21 season Thiago's come in for 20 million Hasn't really done much at all. Um, I think, you know, previously when he was at Bayern, he was he was absolutely class. Um, but he's really struggled in the Prem. They brought in Oz Ozan Kabak from Schalke. Um, he he was he was pretty awful. Um, it was let's let's face it, it was uh, it was 
pretty desperate for them, obviously, in the January window because they were short on numbers, weren't they? Um, and they had quite a, a few injuries uh, in 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 the defence. They brought in Canate Ben Davies from signing. Preston. Not Sorry? Not this summer. Canate that came in from Leipzig. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's all right. But apart from that, Tom, there's there's not really been anything to me that stood out to miss gas from Olympiacos over 10 million. Again, I think he's been pretty average. Um, so, I, all right. Just over the last couple of transfer windows in particular, I think Arsenal have done a better job. Um, I mean, yeah, there's just, there's not, really been anything any standouts for me over the last uh, they brought in Minamino who again they they loaned out not not long after he arrived um to to Southampton um yeah just no standouts for me and and a lot of what appeared to be panic buys if I'm being honest from from Liverpool um which surprises me because if we're talking about transfer business as a whole over the last mm. few years then Liverpool's has been, you know, nine times out of 10, they got it spot on. You know, we talk about Van Dijk, Juan Aldum, Mane, uh, Naby Keita, just a few examples. Um, Fabinho. Yeah, exactly. You know, they've, they've been spot on and that has enabled them to get where they are today. But just focusing on the, the last couple of transfer windows in particular, I think Arsenal, Jota, again, yeah, good, good signer. But we're talking about, he was... He was. Uh, it was obviously last. It was last summer, I think it was. Wasn't it? It was twenty twenty when they brought him in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Jota and and Konate in recent times, yeah, the best best signings for them. But overall, there's two signings out of several names that have come in, and that they're, they're, they're the only ones to have really have made an impact. Um, so, um, you know, just basing it off the last couple of transfer windows, that would be my opinion. I think. Um, when you consider obviously what Arsenal have done this this summer as well, um, it's it's working out um, like a treat so far. So, so yeah, it's, it's difficult to. Uh, I know a lot of people probably agree with me on this. It's, it's difficult when Arsenal are on such a good run at the moment um, and doing doing so well, and they are in a good place. It's <laughs> it's difficult to pick out mm. um, any unpopular opinions. I mean, a, a, a Pepe Pepe for me, I would I would reverse that and actually say. Um, that he's he's um, he's not good enough moving forward. So that is definitely a, an unpopular opinion, as as, as I said earlier. Um, some people may not think um, Martin Odegaard will come good. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but I actually think he he will, and he'll be a very important player for Arsenal moving forward. So yeah, there's a few things, but it's difficult when Arsenal are doing so well. But I definitely think. Not just with Liverpool, but definitely with some other um, Premier League clubs in particular over the last couple of transfer windows. I think Arsenal have been starting to get it right and mm. it has been has been getting better. Yeah, fair enough. Well explained. Um, I, I said that uh, Gabriel Martinelli has not been mismanaged by Mikel Arteta, that is, is my kind of take, which I know... For a lot of people, they're desperate to see a lot more of Gabriel Martinelli. But for me, he doesn't get in the Arsenal team right now. Um, since he came back from that injury at the end of last season, obviously he's more of a left winger than he is so a striker. He has struggled on his return. I think Smith Rowe's been developed into this left-hand side role, which has been a real stroke of genius, to be honest, with Mikel Arteta to be developing in this left-hand side position. Um, and the, the only kind of sympathy I have towards Martinelli's minutes is maybe that he could be given a few more from the bench. Um, I mean, he came on with a few minutes to go against Watford. He could have been brought on maybe a few minutes earlier, but I don't think he's being mismanaged, to be honest, at the moment. I just don't think he's, he's done enough to get in the team. The performances that he's had so far this season, um, we saw him play and start against Brentford, started against Chelsea, and he didn't really offer anything in the, in those two games. He's obviously played in the League Cup as well. He was quite sprightly against Wimbledon, but he played on the right-hand side and he wasn't, you know, he wasn't really able to bar. I think it was winning the penalty. That was about it from the match. I was at the, the Emirates for the game against Leeds. Again, sprightly, but not transformative, or not instrumental in Arsenal's victory. The, the explanation might be for that is that if he was playing week in, week out and getting more minutes, maybe we would see more from him. But... I just don't think he gets into the team right now. I don't think you can sacrifice the form of Emil Smith-Rowe 
to to get Martin. I don't know if either of you two want to come back on that. I think I'm talking rubbish, but uh, I just don't think he gets in the team. Yeah, turns out no, not so unpopular. I, <laughs> I, 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 would, I would agree. I'm sure Belly's not as there. I think he's he's on the same page as well. You know, Gabriel Martinelli. I can't lie. He's a player who I want to see more of, but he's a player I want to see more of because he's talented and he works mm. hard and he, he does make things happen. I know um, when he, he played a couple of weeks ago, um, I think it was against Leeds, wasn't it, in the in the uh, EFL Cup? And he, he did struggle. He, he was a bit rusty, but that's because, you know, he's coming back from injuries, trying to get his full fitness back up again and he, he hasn't been playing many games, but he's still very talented. And he does offer something different. He works very hard for the team. He, you know, gets to the 90th minute and he's still running the socks off. Um, yeah. But yeah, he just needs to, to you know, try and make things happen a bit more going forward, bang, bang in some more goals um, to, to get his confidence back up when he, when he is um, given the chance. There's no doubt about his, his talent and, and about his potential. But, you know, when you are looking at the current team at the minute and in its form, and the likes of Saka, Smith Rowe in particular, who are playing in those wide areas and being absolutely fantastic. You, you, you think, how on earth can can uh, Martinelli get in, especially if, if your £72 million pound man is, is sitting on the bench as well and he's struggling to get into the side? So, I, I mean, it's difficult. I don't want him to leave on loan or anything like that in January because I still think we need, a, we need depth going forward. Um, and uh, obviously... We don't know what's happening with Lacazette and Nketiah come January mm. yet as well. Aubameyang could be leaving for the Africa Cup of Nations. Um, so we'll need depth. We'll need options. And um, yeah, hopefully, obviously, we've progressed in the Cup even more. And we've still got the FA Cup to come as well. Uh, I definitely would expect Gabriel Martinelli to feature in, in the next fixture against Sunderland. So um, hopefully we'll see more of him in the, in the coming weeks. And uh, yeah, he can just sort of really uh, start to push on, really, because mm. I really rate him. I just thought of one on the spot. Um, if Arteta had had his full squad available for the whole season and we'd have signed Ramsdale, Erdogan, Tomiyasu prior to the season's kickoff, we'd be joint top. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely think we'd get that one against Brentford and you could argue think, we'd get something against Chelsea. Yeah. Man City would have been I think tough. we probably would have lost that game still. But yeah, you take two uh, points yeah. off Chelsea... Say we draw that game, we beat Brentford. We'd, we're on twenty four points right now, and we'd yeah. be joint top. And just um, just think yeah. of how like different the the mindset of fans would be as well. They'd be oh. full of full of praise for Arteta. Crazy. Um, no, full of praise. Says, yeah, I, unpopular opinion. Arteta is the man who has been unfairly judged this season. Absolutely. Mm. I think we really have got to forget about those three opening three games now, really, um, and just focus on the last ten. Um, because we're in great form, we've done very well, and you've, you've, we've all seen the difference, haven't we? That the, those new signings have made, and the, the uh, return of some of the injured players like Gabriel um, and uh, Thomas Party, and obviously Lacazette and Abangan were both unavailable for that first game as well. Um, so yeah, those three were right off for me, and I'm just focusing on the last ten and moving forward. Mm. Uh, Paul James says, unpopular opinion, Arsenal should break the bank to get Lacazette a new contract. That is unpopular. I, don't, I mean, I saw Bailey, you nodding there, but I'm, I, I think it's time. Uh, I mean, to yeah, be fair, on, I, I, I think it's time more so. But if it was, say, Aubameyang and Lacazette were both, say, they're both their contracts were going at the end of the season, I would be inclined to keep Lacazette over Aubameyang because we're looking to replace. But because of the contract situation of both of them that Aubameyang has an extra year, I, I'm not sure that we can look to do that if we want to, you know, invest in that. But it's a good, you know, it's a discussion point. I mean, Bailey, you, I you think, yeah. I just I'll, feel I'll, like I'll... Lacazette's the perfect backup striker. I don't know if we can bring a striker and they'll want to come in and be a backup to Aubameyang because mm. then if we're bringing a striker, Aubameyang's going to have to use the captain. He's going to have to start and we'll put him on a left that just won't work. And because if you want to buy a 70 million, 60, pound, 60 million pound striker, they're not going to want to be on the bench with Lacazette. Like Lacazette is or be first to that Lacazette can play behind like, behind the Bamiyan, for example. So for me, Lacazette's just the perfect backup striker. Like he offers something completely different to Aubameyang. He's, he's exactly what we need as a backup striker. I think bringing in someone like Izak or or Flavovic, for example, would they want to come in and be on the bench mm. and be second fiddle to Aubameyang? I don't think so, personally. I just don't know how it would work, the dynamic. But, but that could have been my unpopular opinion, thinking about it now. If a decent offer comes in for him in the summer, for example, I would I would probably cash in for Aubameyang. Um, and the reason being, 
he's well, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, two years older than Lacazette. He's around thirty-two now, I think. Mm-hmm. He probably isn't going to reach the, the the heights that he did when he first arrived at Arsenal, and when you look back at his Borussia Dortmund days, um, and performances last season and a mixture of performances this season probably back that up. So, you know, you've got to think as Arsenal have been recently about the longer term and it probably would make more sense to keep in Lacazette to, to, you know, be back up and provide competition and, you know, cash in on Aubameyang and, and then break the bank for a, for a top class striker. The, the thing is, it's not as plain sailing as that though. We're just speaking as fans and giving our own opinion. Is Lacazette really going to be wanting to sit on the bench every week or most weeks, being a backup mm. to someone when he's you know now thirty years old? He's probably not given up on all hope of getting in the French team again if he gets a a good move away and starts playing every week, scoring goals for fun again, like he did at Lyon, for example. So um, you know, it's probably easier said than done that one. But uh, really, if we are thinking about longer term and where, who we're going to get more out of moving forward, you could probably argue it could be Lacazette. Mm. Yeah, that's a good debate. Let us know if you're watching on Catch Up in the comment section below what you would do with the Arsenal striker situation. Our last main topic, uh, I don't know how much time we're going to have for questions. We'll try and sk- not skim through this topic, but certainly be more concise about it. Um, Dejan Kulazewski, the, the Swedish international Juventus winger, right winger, left footed. I mean, there's a lot of similarities there to a certain Nicola Pepe Bailey, for instance. Um, with the interest in him that's being reported by Demarzio at the moment, do you think that is an indication that even maybe the club is kind of looking for that, you know, the next move on from, from Nicola Pepe? I think it's a no-brainer. If you're bringing in a left-footed, right-sided ringer, then it's, it starts, it's there for you, yes. But it depends if that is actually true or not. I think we have Bakayi Saka there now, who's also a right-sided winger, a left-footed right-sided winger. So would you be, are you going to replace Bukayo Saka as well because you're bringing mm. Kulisewski? I don't think so. I don't know if this, we've been linked with Noah Lang and now Kulisewski, both wingers. I don't know if they're the direction we're going. It's a bit weird that we have been linked with both wingers. Probably, possibly does show that we are actually looking to strengthen in this position. But yeah, in terms of Pepe, definitely. If we were to sign Kulisewski, done for, absolutely done for. But um it is an interesting one where we are linked because I don't see, I don't think that's a position we need to strengthen. I think we've got a lot of depth in there and strength and depth too with Martinelli, with Pepe, with uh, other players as well. So I think that is a position we don't need to strengthen. So it's interesting to see why we are actually linked with Kulisewski. Does it surprise you, Chris, that we're being linked with, stri- uh, with wingers like uh, Bailey says there? Noah Lang previously, Kulisewski now. We've got, as you say, Smith Rowe, Saka, Pepe, Martinelli that can all play there. Bam Yang, we know, can play in a wide area as well. Erdogan can even play in a wide area and has done uh, previously. Is it a surprise to you that we're seeing these links with wide players? Well, it, it is in, in some aspects, yes, because as you touched on there, we've already you know quite stacked in the wide areas of the pitch. But as we've also been touching on, it, it's possible that the club are planning for Pepe's exit in the long, not long, uh, not too long distant future. Um, I mean, I must admit, I don't know too much about Kulusevski, um, but as you know, I'm just looking at his stats at the moment. They're not overly impressive. Eleven appearances in the league, one assist, zero goals. Four appearances in the Champions League, one goal, no assists. I mean, if we're talking about replacing Pepe and and bolstering uh, our attack a bit more um you know and on transfer market he's valued at around just over 30 million pounds mm. I, I expect us to be getting someone who's known for scoring goals a bit more and and providing assists but um he's quite clearly talented he's highly rated another another swedish player just like Svanberg at Bologna um mm. uh, so, um, you know, that's interesting. But again, it would, you know, he's 21 years old. It, it would suit the transfer policy we're going with as a club at the moment, as with uh, Zvan Berg, who I think is around 22. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if if it meant sort of, if, like, and as we touched on, if we were to receive a, a decent offer for, for Pepe, I'm, I'm not too sure £25 million um, is, is acceptable from, from, in my opinion, but if we were to get um, anything over for, uh, 30, um, I think we'd have to think about it. And then, of course, we would need to probably look to bring um, someone else in. Um, uh, from what I read on Twitter this morning, Kulazewski's a, a, t- a target for Tottenham as well. So there could be some competition. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it, it doesn't overly surprise me if we are obviously looking to to offload Pepe soon. But um, you know, certainly with the amount of of players we have got going forward at the moment, you you wouldn't think it's a top priority for Arteta and Edu. Um, I think the centre midfield role and potentially the striker role um, overtake uh, a winger in terms mm. of priority at the moment. But um, who knows? You know, a, a lot of transfer business nowadays depends on outgoings, doesn't it? And that, obviously that domino effect follows. So we'll have to wait and see what happens in January and then obviously mainly in the summer as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's going to be an intriguing January window for Arsenal with the business that we have to do outgoings-wise with Klasenac and Ketia. Possibly on any Maitland-Niles could yet move on. Balogun needs a loan, in my view, and we may see some more loans for some of the other kids like Salah Adin and possibly even Charlie Patino and the like could get some, some senior minutes elsewhere. It could be really beneficial for them. So we'll wait and see what happens. Uh, we are running out of time very quickly. Uh, so I want to tackle one question each uh, and go for or uh, Vinny, who says here, Bailey, how do you think we sort out the issues we have with contracts? We get stuck with players and having quality in the last year. Spurs are dire at this, but players like Son and Kane are always tied down. Um, it's an interesting one. I mean, we do end up kind of getting into these situations with players like Lacazette and Aubameyang. Uh, the, oh, I say Mesut Ozil previously as well, say Kalasnach, Mustafi, Socrates players that aren't necessarily vital for the future of the club, but we find ourselves in these conundrums of tying them down. But clubs like Spurs manage to get their biggest and best players like Son and Kane very much, you know, kept and tied down to long contracts. Yeah, I just feel like we sign, we give players contracts with the notion of we're going to lose them on a free transfer at the end of the contracts. I think we, mm. we give people like players, sorry, like Ozil, 350000 a week. You know, not, there's not going to be another club that's going to give that much to him towards the end of his career, to the end of his contract. And we give it to him in like around the 30s of Bamiang as well. We're not going to be able to sell Bamiang because the money we gave him is absolutely crazy and he's in his 30s. So it's like we sign, we give players contracts so we know they aren't going to leave the club because the money are so good and the, they're in their 30s. I think we need to sort that out and we need to just address mm. how quickly we offer new contracts and if they are going to be for the future, we need to address quickly. Shall we sell them one? Shall we give them shorter contracts or less or lesser money, of course? But with Tottenham and Son and Kane, I think it's proof that they're not, not also doing it right. Kane wants to leave the club and because of that, he's not performing. And that's because of the contract he's, he's been given. So it works mm. both ways, really. I mean, he signed that six was it six years I think he signed on for at Spurs like that was a mistake like absolutely and maybe it wasn't to him when he signed it but it's that it's the history of the Tottenham like they don't win stuff and so if he wanted to win stuff I don't know why he would have signed that and then push for a move just just over a year after last one from Brad Lynch Chris it says do you think Arsenal and these links that we're seeing are just being used again to drum up interest well, potentially, we've we've seen it many times before, haven't we? Agents um, speaking out publicly, saying Arsenal has shown interest in one of my players, or club presidents coming out and speaking publicly and using Arsenal's name as well. It's a you know, it's a it's a regular occurrence. It's a, a thing that um, a lot of people at other clubs and obviously a lot of agents do as well to drive up interest in their clients. Um, you know, we saw uh, those links to Vlahovic at Fiorentina um, surface a few days back, but then they've been knocked back since and said that it's been said that obviously Arsenal um, aren't currently looking into signing him. So you've got to take um, everything you read with a pinch of salt unless it's coming from one of us or one of our very own Arsenal correspondents as well, um, who are always on top of everything. Um, so... Yeah, um, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, you know, we'll be linked with someone one minute and the next it will change. So, um, yeah, as it is always the case with a transfer window, um, it's, it can be unpredictable and you never know what to expect. Um, I certainly wouldn't get, you know, too excited about January, for example. I can't see us doing anything, you know, spectacular. Um, I can mm. certainly see us trying to add a bit of depth to the squad. Um, I can't see it being a, a big name or anything like that. Um, I reckon Eddie will be trying to be a bit clever with, with what they do mm -hmm. but certainly come next summer especially if we have a very positive season um, as well then uh, we can really push on and and uh, add some more uh, gems to to this squad like we did in in, uh, in this summer 
Far more gems than Liverpool, Chris, eh? Uh, than the last two yeah. years, that's for sure. That's for sure. It won't be hard, I'll tell you. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. Really appreciate your time today. Sorry, but we have now run out of time. Do join us uh, on Monday uh, as we return for the next show, which will be in the lead-up to the return of the Premier League, of which you will not have to experience another international break until March after this point. And you'll see Chris in a much more smiley form than you currently see him ahead of a weekend without club football but uh, we hope you've enjoyed the show please do drop a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already bailey always a pleasure mate appreciate your time always a pleasure well, thanks tom thanks chris and everyone no worries fella chris thanks mate appreciate your controversial views as always <laughs> no problem anytime now uh, appreciate it tom appreciate it bailey good to speak to you and uh thank you to everyone for for tuning in um uh, if you haven't subscribed to the arsenal way on youtube yet what are you doing get get on it um, and uh, yeah, hope everyone has a good weekend. Absolutely. Got some more content coming out for you, uh, not only today, but across the weekend, I'm sure, as well. And as I said, do go check out our behind the scenes look at the Arsene Wenger film documentary premiere that is uploaded onto the channel right this very minute. We'll see you on Monday, if not before. Uh, and as always, keep following us down the Arsenal way. Play for the Arsenal.